One is he didn't trust the stamina of the people who gave him money and voted for him to hang in there in the forthcoming battles with the corporate uh, powers. That's one. Uh, and uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of history behind that one. And the second is that his personality is a concessionary personality. He doesn't like to take on power structures. He's a harmony ideology type. And he will compromise the half of the pie and then uh, concede most of the rest half. So he doesn't have a fighting personality. Like Franklin Delano Roosevelt used to say, I, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, revel in the people who hate and oppose me. I mean, can you imagine Barack Obama saying that? And uh, so a combination of a uh, excessively concessionary personality, conflict diverse, not wanting to take on the power structure, with the belief that when the chips are down, the people are not going to stay with them in any organized, focused way to change the situation here in Washington. And you know, they have been trying to get the 13 million email people organized, and it's falling flat. Uh, it's easy to write $25 after you hear a speech. Uh, it's quite different when you're asked to do something that takes time in your neighborhood and breaks your routine. So they're having a lot of trouble with that biggest email list in American political. I mean, nobody came close to it. The other thing was the, he raised more corporate money, Wall Street and corporate lawyer money, than any presidential candidate in history, far more than McCain. And that money comes with strings attached. The small money through the email, that doesn't come with strings attached. And so what you saw was he brought the Wall Street types down to replace the Wall Street types that Bush bought down in Treasury and elsewhere. It was just a shuffling of chairs with different names from the same investment banking, banking and brokerage house firm. That's my best uh, explanation and my most benign. I could, <laughs> I could use stronger words uh, like, uh, he thinks maybe that's the best way to get reelected, you know, the Clinton approach. Um, make no waves, uh, use a lot of good rhetoric, uh, encouraging, insp inspiring speeches, and you can beat the Republican because that's all you have to worry about. There's no one else you have to worry about. Well, I got news for Barack Obama. We're nearing the end of just two major candidates for president because You're going to see billionaires now throwing their hat in the ring. Bloomberg almost went in. He's 50-50, I would guess, he is, is likely to going in in 2012. Because when you're a multi-billionaire, you can raise $600 million by writing a check to yourself. <laughs> and it, it's nothing. You don't have to beg or anything. And you know, in a strange way, people give billionaire candidates benefit of the doubt. Who's going to buy this billion? Uh, and, and the media reports because the person is rich. And the media reports. And the person gets free media in addition to paid media. And then the polls come in. I mean, look at Perot. He came in and just before he dropped out in the summer of uh, 92, before he came back in, there was one poll where he was head ahead of the Democrat Republican candidate. He ends up with 19 million votes after some idiosyncratic you know, statements about who's tapping what phone for his daughter's wedding or whatever. And he had dropped out, he came back in, he got 19 million votes. I mean, I never dropped out. And, I, 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 and you know, I, I'd love to be on the debates. He was on the debates. See the difference? He was on the debates on 92, and they kept him off in 96. And how can you keep you off the debate? Because the debate commission is a private company created and controlled by the two major parties. I mean, we're the mockery of the world, democracy. You can come in second and be president. It's called the Electoral College. 